think there's potentially. You know, this is too hard. I'm gonna throw it in that box. It's difficult. Uh, clay I need to work with in the Mojave Desert. You should probably take some of that there and see if it's actually workable. <laughs> this is an experiment. Can you take hardened uh, stuff? All right. Um, so we left off. We made a top of a head flying off of the top of a brain with a couple of eyes coming up a spinal column, coming up out of... This is sort of uh, Frida Kahlo-like, the way the brow became a unibrow or not um, I'm gonna do the Q in yellow because I just want to not have too much white going on there's gonna be plenty of it and I'm gonna reserve it for, uh, for excuse me further places so this will be the letter wrap for the Q it'll be the outline of the letter um, I can make some decisions as to how fat I want the yellow. Assuming the black is just a um, trace pencil, tr you know, a pen tracer line. Is black going to be on the outside? I think so, but you know, let's do drop shadow. I think that'll be more interesting than just doing consistently, because you could easily understand how to do it consistently. It's more interesting to do something that you're using the two sides in a way that isn't as difficult. Um, and truthfully, when I consider it, um, I have to think smaller than I usually do. I've tended to grow into a much, um, larger, more complicated shapes. As you know, they get really, I don't know, nine, 10 inches by six inches and sometimes larger than that. Um, so that, so when I consider like a, what's going to be the, um, use of the drop shadow. How big is the cue going to be? Then I can design around it, is what I'm trying to say. And I should try to design something simpler because I should probably make it smaller. All right. Let's see. Um, do I want it animated? There's a reason, if all everything else is animating, sometimes having something consistent is appreciated. Um, yeah. Which means I have to do the texture first of the hat, if that's going to be the color of the, of the letter. Um, I have to consider, when I think of hats or textures for like clothing, I want it to be generally denser and more in a tonal family. Like, if I had my way, I'd do um, light pink, dark red. <laughs> and I'd do three colors. And that would be enough to say red from a distance in a Soreau way, though all those little pixels would go together and say, yeah, I'm red. When they're, um... But I actually don't have quite the shades I want. So, you know, I have options. This is a little too hard. It's junk. Um... And um, any kind of secondary red would be good, like this an orange-ish red or, or uh, like, I don't know if that's different enough to matter. Um, and this is really uh, too hard. I think I'm going to um, pasta grind it. I'm going to turn around and run out the grinder. It's, it's Maybe savable if I can um, get it through there without. Yeah, it's kind of crappy, but it, this is the kind of thing that actually makes it savable. It's not great. Um, I think the key is to kind of let go of some of the edges and just use the center part that's less chunked up. Stupid. That's difficult. I'm going to um, try that again on this one. This is hard. Um, 
I wish I had a darker red, but instead I think I'll just go for a thicker red. You know, I'd like to do multi-tones, I don't have it, so I'm gonna do a two-third, one-third or something. Try to put a texture in there that's complementary, but make you know it's a red hat, not a pink hat, per se. Pink is just there to keep it from being solid red. Uh, and I wish I had a lighter um, shade of coral or something for the red, just slightly, or darker, um, but I don't see it. So, um, like that, like brick yeah, you got, yeah, let's see what the, if it's any good. I think it's just like this. Is this different enough? Oh yeah, this burnt, but okay. Um, will that read? It's, I guess the thing is the chroma takes it toward brown, and I always think of it as a kind of, um, MAGA is a cartoon, mm -hmm. and um, I'm making a cartoon strategy, but MAGA is, uh, wants to be children's colors, I guess, because it is clear across TV sets, and to people who sometimes think like children. Okay. No, they, they go to their comfortable place when, they, when the bright colors and the blonde, leggy women and the whatever doughboy announcers tell them their favorite bedtime stories. So um, all I'm trying to do is make the texture for the hat to give it some information. And in making that, um, I've chosen to go a little this way. And I'm not sure quite how to get it darker, deeper without like your suggestion. Well, no. Yeah. I could go brown, but it's just, I don't know. I'm gonna go two, two thirds, one third and hope that that sort of reads, even though I, I really need red? a separate, what? Two thirds red? Yeah, two thirds red. You know what I'm gonna do is put a hotter, I'm gonna put a really thin, the thinnest happy hot pink I can find and just call it um, texture, super thin. Oh, let's do, I'll do magenta, it's in the family. And complementary to this, that's also true. Okay, I'm making a really hyper contrasty background for the black yellow because these are Electric starting to get more strange. They'll still know what it is. I don't think they'll be confused. So, there. That's not ideal, but it also is sort of can be more combustive. So, maybe that's. How come you're doing it in that shape? In the shape because I'm lazy. <laughs> it should be a, a. It's like this came out this way and I don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to cut it apart later. But yeah, that's funny. Yeah, as if I had a plan on that one. No, it's. <laughs> It's just getting enough bulk to actually define the hat. Enough actual, um, no, these are too stiff, damn. All right. Yeah, I'm out of I think, is this? that? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna, should I run it through? Hmm. I don't know. They're kind of fat. Yeah, I'm gonna have to run them through. So, depending on the animation I do. So I've taken three colors with, with, and this should come out, um, less, like more smoother because it's got the combination of nicer, softer colors working with that crappy, um, useless color. And this, oh, it's just imprecise <coughs> equipment. Here we go. Um, okay. 
Hats are like beach balls, or like a half a beach ball. And you do a beach ball shape as a series of sort of S-curve shapes that are fatter in the middle and really taper at the edges. And so you stack them up, and that gets a the illusion of the beach ball texture going from one side to another. And I'm going to do a half beach ball on this guy, which means um, I want to choose, I'm going to make a, uh, a blank or a bottom shape that is the beach ball. Uh, huh, this going to be fun. All right. So this is, imagine that the, that the hat is like extruded all the way down. I'm making a bottom shape that's a sort of an S-curve and it tapers, it's gonna get fatter in the middle and taper on both sides. And then um, we get um, something to line up like this. Okay, so watch that. And I'm just going to repeat the hell out of it now. You can't really do it by making a sandwich to begin with because you're actually trying to get a fat center. Um, it's really on an S curve. If, if I were spending a little more time, I would really try to taper these edges more than what you see, but this will get the point across. So um, thin, fat, then disappear. Just a series of overlapping layers. And the reason they have to be staggered like this and not done out of a typical sandwich is, um, what I'm gonna to try to get is a sense that they're rotating from a certain pivot <laughs> after this is, this is like half of it is done. And this is the first part. And the second part, we'll try to make this top part more centralized by squeezing it and pushing it up to the top. Step one, lots of, um, yeah. Now, it's getting a little bizarre. Um, I'm just going to bring it back to whatever I was attempting to try to make as a shape. This uh, beach ball S-curve. Um, so we're going to get the hat texture. I'm going to do a pinch at the top to sort of deform it to be more curved like a where the beanie would go on the top of a baseball cap. That's where this will be headed. And then once the texture is there, I have to sort of carve it apart and deal with the cue that's going to be inserted into this moving texture. So is that the... It's the baseball cap. Um, it's like having a bunch of like Yankee pinstripe lines that are just mm. rolling around once the cap is... reads as a cap and sort of as a texture. Let's see if it works. Uh, I've got it backwards sometimes, but I don't think that'll be of consequence. Yeah. This is a really important new shape, probably. You probably haven't thought about that you should. It does all kinds of things. Um, when you're trying to rotate a globe. You know, I did a globe like this. I can't remember what. Um, Christopher Columbus has done this way. So the globe that's rotating in Christopher Columbus is, I basically took a, I built a, um, yeah, I built the continents doing the sliding effect. Um, at first I built a regular globe, and then I took all the slices of it and rearrange them so they all came out um, slightly staggered against each other. And these became the sort of uh, Mercator lines or the longitude latitude lines in that rotation of the peewee globe. You restacked it? I restacked it after cutting it the first time. As a straight globe, I slipped every, every disc got slipped. And this sort of um, S-curve is how you give the illusion. If it was a globe, I'd be curving the S-curve on the side. This isn't, this is a uh, cap that has a half a shape, a stiff, you know, stiff sides. Um, but if it was a globe, it wouldn't have this um, edge. It would have a more of a, I would have also dovetailed it the whole other direction, not just this kind of 
vertical that's going to come out. All right. Um, so. Can you uh, show the camera? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you recognize this, this would be a good candidate for a dovetail joint where you just slice it, you slice the texture down the middle and you put the back half on the front half. So it all squares up again because it's so easier, it's much easier to work with squared material. Um, I'll keep that in case. Um, so now to the brim part of the hat. Um, it's, you don't want to just pinch it. You really want to find a, um, a center that stays the center, a ridge with all these little curves that are bending down out of it. So I'm, I'm not just going, I'm really trying to kind of mold the thing up into a, um, a proper pinch. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and widen it out because it needs to be fatter. And I could build them. Sometimes it's good to build them a quick uh, negative mold for stuff like this which is just like a V um, that holds um, the ridge that you're trying to make. So you're killing two birds with one stone. You're trying to actually reinforce what you think is going to be the ridge line, which is actually kind of more like that. Okay, I'm going to reinforce it by making the negative and then I'm gonna push out on the other side. So it's, I'm gonna make the hat fatter at the same time. Let's see if it works. Because if I push the down now, it would just flatten out, which is not what I'm trying to get on the other side. So I'm trying to give it some support. Um, all right. Now, is it getting fat enough? Kind of, if it's a cap. I wanna maybe do a little fatter. Um, let's see. It's probably time. I'm going to go ahead and and, and uh, imagine the center line of the cap. Now well, that's not quite what I was hoping because I wanted to bow it out. So it's good to recognize what you have. You know, that's more like a baseball cap, right? And I'm going to go ahead and put this. It was cut in the middle. Uh, it's going to um, it needs to dovetail. The two sides need to dovetail. And so the animation continues, never stops. It's a cycle, if you will. It's a just, if you were to cycle it, you would get back to the original one. We won't, it'll never be that quite the precise, but in theory, um, by dovetailing it, you're in a sense using this frame to match with that frame on the back side. So, Again, you have to think Yankee pinstripe hat, red, is the attempt. And then I'm gonna have to, I'm, now I'm reinforcing the ridge that is the beanie on the top. So all of this stuff should just look like a spindle, like a, a whipping in a whipping bowl or something, just rolling around. I don't know if that's a good analogy. Okay, um, I do wanna curve it this way because I, I do wanna get the, inside of it to be uh, concave, allowing whatever the shadow will be to, um, yeah, all right. So that's a lot of uh, hat texture. I guess I'll make it a bigger, a little bit bigger and fatter while I'm at it. So that's expanded it. Um, beanie goes here. I'm gonna um, divot the beanie because it needs. Um, no, I'll do some. I'm gonna do the red outline first. I just think it's because I'm trying to say red hot, not pink and purple and uh, magenta. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just cartoon the hook. Yeah. Okay. The bill, the brim, whatever the hat is um, to be thought about. And it's 
going to rotate up the other direction somehow and overlap slightly. It doesn't need to be much, and I don't know that I need to do anything with the bill that's, that's anything more than an outline plus a, a, maybe a black dark bottom and a white top or something, you know, shine. So the color will just um, be the simple, one of the simplest things we have in our piece. Um, this is going to be enough to be looking at. Um, I think the bill, I'm going to say it wants to go up because it's a page, you know, a newsboy bill, <laughs> just a little bit, or it's got attitude. Um, we'll go with the white on the top of this um, and the black on the bottom attempting to um, make a shadow and so this also allows by doing the cue in yellow black it allows um, um, you to use, use white elsewhere or you wouldn't be able to all the time right? I'm going to say that this is where the sunlight hits. Excuse me. I don't know how clacky my gum chewing is right now. If you did, you watch any Donnie Depp and Amber? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. He's he's like chewing gum all the time, or working on Tic Tacs, or some mint in his mouth as a way of like breaking what is it enduring the tension it's just a like power move power move <laughs> he seems i don't know tell me what you think i mean i don't want to make comments but he's fairly thoughtful when he speaks and he always tells stories have you noticed he's always mm -hmm. like telling like, <coughs> middle beginning and end, where it started what happened, how he reacted in the middle, and all the rest. And they do seem fairly consistent when I see the versions of them. Um, I think being consistent in life is really hard, you know. Being true to your memories, because we're always recreating our memories um, every day, right? We're never really remembering. We're remembering the memory we had of the memory. <laughs> and so we're making up new facts or losing other facts kind of as life goes on. Um, all right, so... Are you putting black in there? I'm going to put black in shadow and then I'm going to make the beanie especially cute. So the beanie gets to, and since it'll bring everything together because it'll be black on the bottom and white on the top and a cute little button at the top. Oh. So it kind of reinforces whatever's going on in the rest of the hat to say, hey, this is the design of this piece, maybe. That's what I'm thinking. Um, you know, the, thing, the funny thing about a bill is it, it, it's really kind of a pinched almond oval, and you have to get the fat end correct to get it con convincing that it's the shape you're trying to get. Well, it's not yet there because I'm trying to do the, I'm going to do the underside now. So when you see the angle of the hat I'm trying to throw at it, this might make some more sense. Um, well, we'll go ahead and do the, the button, just because I mentioned it. I think the key is that the white stays up. Maybe. Um, but the black is up there with it. Okay. So, make a choice. Um, all right, I'm gonna revisit it. It's not perfect. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. I'm gonna continue with the more difficult stuff and then if I have to fill in to 
mimic whatever design I've got on the top. Um, it's funny how this is super white on this side, but it's not on the other because we're hitting the butt end. So I'm going to just shrink it down a little bit. I've just extruded it like, you know, a quarter of an inch. So now I'm looking at the white there and I want to keep it on top. So I hope this, is, I hope this does it right. If not, it's animating. <laughs> I guess that's always the uh, strange little upside. Okay. This is probably a better shape than this. This still has a sort of a Turkish, um, I don't know, a bizarre soldier or something. Um, I don't know how I'll fix that. I haven't figured that out. All right. So, big ass hat. Actually, I don't think I'll do the shadow underneath. I'm still, you know, the, you know, drum roll please. I have to get the cue in there and there's no cue, right? So, um, I've made the choice to do <coughs> surgery on this hat rather than to build, I could have made the choice to build the cue first and build out from it, which would probably be traditional. But if I'm trying to get a texture inside the cue itself, then this is the texture I want to kind of have in there and it is its own, it has its own flow. So like in the negative space of the cue. Yeah. It has its own flow and I want to keep that flow. It won't be it'll be a little bit wanky, but it'll kind of make sense in the gestalt of or the um once all the all the moving pictures going, you kind of say, "Oh yeah, it's it's slightly slipping, but it it is that." So, um I'm going to take it from the bottom and bend out the top. So this is surgery. Um, because I want it the top to flow, and that'll be the top of the cue eventually by the time I'm done. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how to do an exact. Uh, yeah. Yes, there it is. Thank you. Um, all right. Can you see it still? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna switch this around so it's really the main event, I guess, maybe. All right, is this still visible? Yeah. Yay. So this is, I'm gonna be carving, I could carve three cuts or two. I could make a V or I could make, you know, an octagon, three cuts on each side. So we close it back together, it's gonna to be an octagon. And I'm gonna to try to preserve this is tricky because the exact is not long enough on the inside cut to accomplish what I need, but like that's not going deep enough. Um, and I'm going to work around it. Just work. I'm just going to work it and see if I can get the middle enough to pull it or carve around it. What I'm trying to do is extract it. So um, I can see, you know, what I'll do is sort of w work it down all the way because my exacto knife is ridiculously small for this task. Uh, there are some tools that would do it. I don't have them nearby, like a putty knife that's very skinny or a palette knife on a painter's palette would probably be a long, skinny carving tool. Um, so that's a bit of a mess, but you know, it's sauce. So this is one half of the inside of the cube, the negative space of the cube. And I'm gonna try to keep track that it's actually I'm going to remember that it goes there and then I'm going to do the other half in here. Um, I'm going to try to carve an octagon or six sides. This will be the other three sides and I can get a good cut on the open side because it's open and hell I can even I'm going to rip the two pieces apart and it'll make it easier to work so I should just do that. I'm trying to keep this so it doesn't, there's no, there's like a continuity line that isn't broken. That's why I was hanging on to it, but I may give up and just say, hey, continuity at hell. You're going to see a slight, the result will be to see a slight jag or, um. And why are you doing an octagon and not just an O? Well, I don't, I can't really, if I spent the time, I could do an O. Oh, I guess I'm getting the, the simplest cut shapes carve without spending extra time to try to mm -hmm. yeah and since the tool is ru rudimentary I don't have even the chance to get the middle which is going to be a rip and so I'd rather know that I can get that rip so I bent it down and I'm going to keep keep carving 
because I can actually help. I can help, you know, a simple cut shape. Now this is more of a wedge, which is unfortunate. That's another alternative, by the way. You could do two cuts on each side and make it just a square, but it's a little less true to the circle of the, yeah, this is a mess. Where does that really go? So here I'm trying to match back, you know, basic. It really doesn't matter. I'm doing it just as a formality, I guess. All right, so putting them together. Um, you want to rematch like to like, which looks like this one goes here. And like to like, I'm looking at the pattern. Um, let me see on this side. Well, this did get that strange extra piece, so the pattern is less uh, super abundant. Um, All right, well, it's either gonna be this way or that way. All right, is it this way? Maybe. Is it that way? Probably more, I don't know, seems, yeah. No, I'm gonna guess it's this way. If it's not, it's just gonna be more interesting animation <laughs> where, where it's going in a contrary direction. That's the worst case scenario. If, it's, if it is, you'll just feel like it's going all together. Well, you know, I should match them together. That's the easiest way to do it. No, they're not. So I did it wrong. Good thing I looked. Um, the two of them should meet uh, with a more of a pattern. That yeah, that's the pattern. There it is. Done. Do 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 do. And then it goes back there that way. I know that was a lot of uh, you know tw twisting and turning there. So I'm sorry. Uh, ultimately, that will approximately marry back in. But I'm going to have to um, now smooth. <laughs> My damage. This is this the surgery part is now I gotta fix the patient up and sew it up. So I revealed the innards and the internals, but uh let's do a little okay. And then we have to decide how to cuify it. And hopefully I can remember you know, I keep forgetting which is the top. I think it was this one, because it wasn't clear like this. And I could do this and say, all right, what are you? Yeah, that's the bottom, there's no doubt. That's correct sides. Um, I think. Hmm. I'm trying to roll it around and guess what the, uh, the best lineup was, because I could see the center and it really, it should be like either this way or 180, 180 from that. And it doesn't make enough sense to uh, give me a lot of certainty. Um, I'm going to do that because I don't know any better. And by now, is this twisted off? Yeah, I'm trying to replace it. All right. Yeah. It's not perfect, but it will be interesting because the texture, yeah, it's close enough. Um, so adding the Q texture, do I want it to move or animate? And maybe not. Is the Q going to be in perspective? Mm. Or is it going to be flat? I'm just going to, yeah. I, you, right. You could make it in perspective. I hadn't, I was going to make it flat because enough, you know. There's only so much that I can accomplish with the uh, simple tools of illusion in this. But, um, yeah. You could. Enough dedication. Um. I remember what I wanted to do with the cubes. I wanted to do as a drop shadow. All right, so what that means is um, that's why I'm going to keep it straight. Is um, uh, I'm going to decide. Let's decide where the shadow is coming from. All right. Let's assume the shadow is going this way because it has to define the cue itself. The reason I did that is I want the cue to be in the right drop drop shadow orientation. For now, it'll make a little more sense in a second. So, um, in essence, <laughs> this is so wrong. <laughs> it's gonna, there's things that are gonna come out wrong. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I can try to tell you what they are, but what's gonna happen is I'm thickening, anyway, 
the um, yeah, is that, yeah. Uh, it's 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 sort of like. Um, Are you gonna put black back on the yellow? No, I'm gonna leave it like this and put the cue in. When I get to it, um, gotta make sure the cue has enough yellow on it, and not it's not cheated because it's a it's an essential thing that it's not an O. People must be very understanding. It has to be super clear. So I'm gonna make sure that the yellow is fat enough that there's no ambiguity. So I'm going to use the parts that convince me, yeah, that's pretty fat. So no way they won't know it's a cue. Or else you're dissing every organ state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, right, no. Uh, <laughs> it'll just be confusing. And Stratica's complex enough. It's, you know, it's like uh, more confusion. I'm going to go there. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and carve it out. And I'll tell you what the problem with what I'm doing is now that I've made it this much fatter and so it won't fit into the shape, right? Mm. Uh, so uh, if I were to stretch it out to fit, then the animation would be slower than what's in the background. Like if you compress it? Yeah, if I, if I compressed it like this way and I extruded it so it became longer this way, mm -hmm. it would actually start to fit in the shape. I'd cut off the top, but then I would be having slower animation in the center and faster on the sides. Mm. Yes? You, you must get that by now, right? Yeah. Okay, excellent. I can't, I mean, it's second nature to me, but I think explaining it is super important and- Yeah, I mean, like I wouldn't have thought of that, but hearing you say it makes it. Yeah, good, good. It, 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 uh... So this is a Pac-Man, but not a very good one. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make it bigger. You can't be big enough on your cue. I want a fat cue. <clears throat> I don't want no O. All right, fat enough. And now I'm going to look at the drop shadow I made. And for better or worse, the attempt here is to put the drop, the black up, oddly enough, and the yellow down. And so n now there's a really rudimentary sense of dimension, perhaps, to the O because uh, it's like it's got an extruded shape in the most simple, ridiculous sense of the word. Um, yeah, so we're in trouble on that. We can make the hat bigger. <laughs> um, you know, I have to finish uh, getting the, the actual uh, cue in there anyway. And so the question is, well, all right, do I just make more red <laughs> as a cheat in order to keep the texture the same? And um, it will read. Um, and that people may forgive me if I do something so, you know, oddly. Um, all right, I'm gonna do a little bit of um, carving because I really do want that to be at least at the bottom of the current hat. I don't really want it to grow up. So I'm going ahead and I'm, I'm distorting it slightly by um, pinching a deeper curve and I'm pulling this out. And this little flange here is gonna be the support side of the cue that comes out. All right. And then I'm gonna just patch the mother with some, with some red and make sure that you know, it's buried enough that it isn't touching what will be the bottom of the hat. I don't know, you know, could I use the hat inversely? Would people understand if the hat was going the other direction and it was actually looking, the hat was looking, looking down on the hat rather than up at it, rather than repeating these kinds of things. My goal right now is simply to decide what cover I'm making. Is it convex or concave? And I want to cement the fact that the cue is, in, is buried in the hat this deep, at least, at least that deep. So you're not confusing it. If I were to use any black or drop shadow on this uh, underneath it, then it's not, it's not bl blending into the shape. There's a distinction to the letter. And, yeah. I may want to fatten this up anyway by, by you know, pushing, pinching it all in. I think it's a little, um, 
wide now for the uh, first let me get try to get the shape this is a down this is a convex this isn't any kind of concave I mean it makes the hat bill flow um, so the question is will the will the forehead read as a forehead if I do it this way instead of the other way I was planning to do it hmm. all right let's uh compress it. This probably helps um, it feel more like a hat which tend to stand up rather than this is a little slouchy. Um, it's real big. So I really don't want to compress it. I just want to literally get rid of it, I guess. And decide. So I'm extruding now. I'm actually trying to um, thin it once I really cut it out. So you can see a little. It gets a little like a millimeter taller each process. But I'm trying to evenly do it all over the block, just like rolling a snake, just like making a brick. You're trying to keep whatever shape you're thinking you're trying to achieve, and you're trying to push evenly to keep that shape as you extrude by hand. Pinch, pinch, finger, finger. Um, you know, to me, this is a simpler shape to understand because I can just go with the curve. Um, maybe it's okay to, um, you know, I'm gonna try it, you know, just dive into it and bring the two together as an overlapping thing, but the hat is actually coming over his freaking forehead and not being, um, wedge it out. Oops. I don't want to put more messy if I'm really trying to use slices later because I this isn't really quite thick enough. I should have made it a little beefier but I was doing it for time and I can't go back now so I try to keep everything cleaner. Yeah thank you. Okay. Um, So we're looking at it from the complete opposite side now. Um, sure. Why not? Here. So the proof cut, which is always the moment of truthy thing. Um, again, I'm cutting toward myself. I'm doing it super slow, super carefully. There, uh, one in a thousand times, you will cut yourself. Um, as a butt cut, it may be that the cue is not deep enough. I'm pretty sure it's deeper, so I'm not too worried that it will read. Right now, it's on the edge of readability. Um, and by butt, I just mean, you know, the end of the loaf. Okay. Again, that's distorted. So, do I want to unpack it and make that clear? Because I can't not have that clear, otherwise mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a fail. Is, how much taller is it than this? Oh, I can still, yeah, I could, yeah, you're right. I could pray that I had done it right. Something tells me I've, uh, I mean, I always, I always worry. Maybe I'm a worry word. Well, it's backwards cue. Can we get forwards cue, please? That's almost sufficient, but I believe it's deeper here. Let's do it. Yeah, it's, We'll understand. That's cute. That's cute. And if they don't, no, maybe I should. Hmm. Let me do one more. I still have room. It's still not uh, too late. Maybe. No. In a mirror, I'd pre probably read it as cute, but it does feel a little um, sloppy. I am down to. To, uh, yeah. All right. I'm gonna. Damn. It's okay. You know, there's 
it's it's life and it, I guess it's important that you understand you know I rarely ever show this surgery you know and it's important that you can actually pull it apart and go in and try to make whatever you were attempting to be clear less less opaque um, all right um, is just, it a problem that the yellow cracked yeah yeah it is I did it fast I didn't do it <laughs> I tried to explain what it, you know, it takes 40% more energy in my brain to try to actually explain it mm -hmm. um, than just to literally do it with si in silence or listening to music. Um, you know, I just think the biggest thing is to make sure that the cue is super deep. And I thought it was deep, but it just isn't deep enough. And that's really what my call is here. Um, It's not ideal. So I'm going to go ahead and, and um, s seriously cut the patient. All right, cue's gone. New cue coming. Oh, I guess it really wants to be long and fat. Okay. I know that it's a little blobby and distorted, like I've overlapped a little bit. It's just going to be wobble. It isn't going to not, I should, I don't think it'll not read if, just to have that. And this is certainly simpler. So I'm coming back to your idea of, um, is the bottom, since the bottom is a little chattery, like the clay, the cue didn't, so this is a better, a better answer. So I can curve it back into the circle shape on both sides right there. And I'm going to have to add more red. And this is backwards Q. That's appropriate now. And this is forwards Q. So I just had to make it beefier. And probably all for the best because you got to see surgery. Yeah, it does look better. Surgery is important not to be afraid to say, oh, that needs to be reworked. Doing this probably wouldn't work, right? Oh, surgery on that? Yeah. It'd be much harder. Uh, partly because it's sat, these little oils have all gotten cozy with each other, and this was new, and so the oils hadn't really sat there and gotten all cozy. Yet. So there was a little bit more of a gap <laughs> separation with this one working for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and recarve this this little flange here, because I want it to be now the new line for the cue, and I'm going to go ahead and re emphasize this little circle so now it goes back together and then I have to glue more red to cover it if I really you know want the hat to be more short and on his head. I could have maybe cut some of this off and tapered it against itself so it looked like it wasn't just cut off. <laughs> um, then I could take the same design and sh shrink it in uh, width because this is the widest freaking thing in the whole, the whole piece now. Um, and it is giant compared. You know how Stratagut grows? There's something about, I don't know, maybe it's just doing it fast makes it grow. I don't, I think that the, that the brim needs a line. I've been looking at that brim and separation of the hat. So this is more surgery just to rip it apart and decide, okay, I'm going to give a little more definition to all of it. That, like uh, here? Yeah. Yeah. Like there. It, it doesn't maybe absolutely need it, but I kind of, I don't know. I'm, I am over, over, uh, We're doing the uh, edges to ensure readability at the cost of subtlety <laughs> or at cost of, you know, gentle 
gradients color. Um, so I have to decide how that bottom wants to fit on this head. Do I want it to like be more tilted up? Or do I want it to be more even? Or um, yeah, I guess I'm just gonna go with what it it's telling me. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm trying to say, all right, maybe something fits here. <laughs> um, now I'm gonna go ahead and I've made the shape, and now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, black it out because it's the shadow dropping onto the uh, head. Um, where's the darker green um, that I found uh, for that family like this, uh, sort of, maybe, yeah, okay. All right. Um, and, which one? To point it to me. Which one do you think it is? Oh, this one? No, that's, no. which one? Yeah. This. Yeah. Is that the same? Yeah, that's right. Same. Cool. Either one. Thank you. All right. Um, I guess my idea here is it's a shadow. It's his, in theory, this is his skin shoulder being shadowed by the hat. Could be wrong. So what I wanted to do, I would have done a lot more of that down here to try to model or make shape, 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 shadow um, over a character. I'm gonna move the beanie up. I think that it's a little too far back. So I'm just reefing on it because I'm gonna press it back down again. I'm just trying to create a sort of um, onion, really flat onion dome and then flattening the top of it even more. And then trying to get this back side to work. And then I could use um, a little, um, oh. Yeah, I hope that that still looks like a semicircle now. You know, if I press that too much, is this too distorted? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't read. Maybe it's just fine. It's all just crazy enough that people will get the idea if they want to get the idea. That's certainly nice. Um, but maybe the souffle on that little extra green is bad, but it also kicks the red really nicely. Um, and then I have to ask, is it circus green time or not? Or should I do black? I was gonna take a little, a little darkness. To to help the. Uh, I don't know. And a little darkness on the back, since I did a lot on the front. I think I need to just make sure that. This is a this is a very small tonal uh, shadow or something. It's not trying to be an out, a full outline 360 all the way around it. It's just saying, hey, there's a little bit of a I don't know edge. And then I'm gonna finish the the uh, cementing of the hat again, sadly with black, but there it is. And that makes it very Halloween-like and very Day of the Dead-like, I guess, as a design. All right, it's clear. I think if people, they'll get that it's a beanie. Here are the, you know, earlier test cases. Um, I could probably use this texture in his intestines because that would be the next thing I'm thinking about. I'm gonna build, um, I'm gonna try to build two things tonight. One is um, a little, uh, three letters. I thought that that's a beginning of a letter demo. Um, I want to build um, the tiniest letters I can build. So it's going to be kind of ridiculous. Um, 